Hey guys, thanks for joining me for an episode of Learn to Play Games. My name is Lance, and today we're going to take a look at Dicey Peaks by Calliope Games. This is a 2-6 to six player game that takes roughly 20 minutes to an hour to play. It is a competitive game, so each of the players is working against the other players to be the overall winner. In the game itself, each player is going to play a mountain climber that has decided to try to conquer the Yeti Mountains. They're going to do this each turn by rolling dice and trying to push their luck by rolling additional dice to gain ice picks to climb the mountain or to rest to recoup some of their oxygen from their tanks. Now, there's a couple of things that are going to, to go against the players, though. If the players roll too many avalanches, then the mountain will fight them back and cause them to bust and lose their turn. And on top of that, there's also yetis that are hunting the, the climbers. So if the climbers roll yetis, that's going to cause their opponents that are falling behind to move forward as they're trying to run from those yetis that they're terrorizing them. So that being said, my opinions of this game so far are very good. I've had a good time with it. I enjoy Dice Truckers, as you guys know, and I definitely would recommend this one. There's plenty of, of variety within this and some strategic... Um, options with it as you will determine whether or not you want to roll those extra dice or managing your oxygen tank is a really interesting feature as well as your oxygen tank will determine uh, how fast you can climb and as you get higher up in the mountain it's going to be harder and harder to regain those those oxygen points to be able to move quickly so it's a matter of deciding whether or not you want to climb fast initially or if you want to go at a slower pace Maybe having other players move ahead of you in order to keep your oxygen stores higher for later in the game. So it's a really interesting dynamic. Definitely like it. Definitely would recommend checking it out for you guys. Um, really enjoy the artwork. I thought that everything really kind of engrossed you within the game, kept you interested. Um, the way that the board works, it's a tile system, as you guys will see. And at the beginning of the game, as you're laying them out, there will be extras. So each game is going to be a little bit different, a little bit unique, the way that it's set up and what tiles come out. So definitely think that there's plenty of replayability with this as well. I had a really good time with this one, showed this one off to the family um, that we had come over a couple times. And they really enjoyed it. And they're not big gamers, so definitely a very easy game to teach. And so let's go ahead and head to the table, and I'll teach you guys how to play. The first thing we're going to look at are the dice, which there are three different sets included in the game. And the way my group plays, we call these the morning dice, day dice, and night dice. Each of the dice sets is going to have a different breakdown of the symbols on them, which are the pickaxes. So the morning dice will have three pickaxes, one tent, one yeti, and one avalanche. The day dice will have two pickaxes, two tents, one avalanche, and one yeti. And the night dice will have three tents, one pickaxe, one yeti, and one avalanche. Player setup is very easy. Each player will get a dashboard, which will have their oxygen tank on one side, and a quick reference for their turn sequence on the other. Each player will also choose a color for their um, climber, and they'll also receive an oxygen tank to keep track of their oxygen level, which at the beginning of the game, they'll set it at 9. Before going through setup, you're also going to break down each of the tile stacks into its own number. So we have 6, 5, 4, 3, and 0. For board setup, the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and grab the tile set of number 6 and shuffle those all up. And then you're going to place out a number of tiles as the base of the mountain. And this will be 6 tiles, which for everything but the 0 tiles, you can, it basically is the same number of tiles for that as well, as you guys will see. Do not reveal these tiles. And then any extras you have will be placed back in the box. And we'll do this for each set. For the last set, you're going to go ahead and mix up all of these as normal. Uh, but with these, the way it's going to work is you're going to place two of them. And then the final one will go at the very top. Now we have our mountain built. We're ready to start the game. Each player's turn is going to consist of three phases, so we're going to go ahead and go through these now, and we're going to start with purple. The first thing is to choose five dice that you're going to roll, and as we're looking to climb, the highest concentration of pickaxes is going to be on the morning dice. So we're going to go ahead and take four of those, and then we're going to take one afternoon dice as it has at least two pickaxes on it. The rest of the dice we can move off to the side, and then we're going to go ahead and give these a roll. 
All right, so we did pretty good. We got three pickaxes out of it. And at this point now we're going to decide whether we want to climb or rest. So we only rolled one tent and we can't rest at this point because our oxygen tank is completely full. So this dice can be set back into the pool of dice. The avalanche is going to be set off to the side because if we roll three avalanches when climbing, we will bust and our turn will end immediately. Now we have three pickaxes. We're going to set those off to the side. And at this point, we can either choose to end our turn and climb using our pickaxes that we rolled, or we can push our luck and roll three additional dice of our choice. And they can be any of the dice that we have remaining. So we're going to go ahead and push our luck. We're going to roll three of the uh, afternoon dice. So I rolled three tents, so it doesn't do any good for me I'm, as I'm climbing. So these can be set off to the side again, and I can go ahead and push my luck again or choose to stop. So I'm going to go ahead and push. All right, so I rolled two more tents and one more pickaxe. So I'm going to go ahead and push my luck again and continue rolling. So I've got two more pickaxes and a Yeti. So the Yeti is going to be set off to the side as well. That'll be locked. And at this point, again, I can choose to push my luck or stop. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here and resolve my turn. So at this point, then I'm going to count up the number of pickaxes that I rolled. So I have six. I'm going to move my oxygen gauge down one for each success. So I go from nine to three. And then I'm going to move my climber that number of spaces. So one, two, three, four, five, six. The space that he lands on, he will resolve by flipping it over. And then as you guys will see on the back of the rule book is provided all the different symbols that you'll find. So this one is a nothing and does has no effect and it won't harm him or benefit him in any way. From there, then we would resolve the Yeti. So when you roll one or more Yeti symbols, when you're climbing, if there are any climbers behind you at the start of your turn, then each one of them will get to move forward one space if the space is not turned over, they will not flip it over. And if the space is turned over, they will not resolve any effects of that space. All right, so now that Purple's turn is done, let's go ahead and take a look at another example of a turn. So we're going to move over to the white player. Again, he's going to choose his dice. So we're going to take the same combination and give him a roll. All right, so he's got two Yetis. So we'll lock those off to the side. He's got one avalanche and one tent and one pickaxe. So at this point, he is going to want to climb, so he's going to set that off to the side. And then he wants to continue, so he's going to grab three dice of his choice and give him a roll. All right, so he's got another avalanche. He picked, he's picked. he got another pickaxe, and he's going to push his luck a little bit farther. He's going to roll one more set. All right, he's got another pickaxe. We're going to go again. All right, so he's not doing too bad. Let's go ahead and say, for example, that he rolled another avalanche. So at this point, his turn he has busted and his turn is over. He would not resolve any of the pickaxes or Yeti symbols, and it would move straight over to the next player. Okay, so moving over to the blue player's turn, we're going to go ahead and say that he rolled the dice and ended up getting four pickaxes. He chose to stop at that point, so we're going to go ahead and resolve that. He'll move his oxygen gauge down four spaces, and then he'll move four spaces. One, two, three, four. And flip this tile over at this point then we're going to resolve the effects of the tile so this one's going to make us move two spaces forward one two now if this tile would have an action he would not resolve it any tile that causes you to move or any for any reason after your initial landing you would not resolve the effects of those tiles and that's included in the uh, yeti effect as well so now let's head back over to purple so that you guys can see how a rest action works as we are somewhat low on our oxygen, we're going to go ahead and try to rest this turn. So we're going to use the four evening dice as they have the highest chance for resting and one of the afternoon dice. So we'll go ahead and roll these. All right. So now evening or when choosing to rest, which is what we're going to do now, this is going to work just a tad different. We're going to set a, uh, aside all the 10 symbols that we roll. And any of the Yeti symbols that we roll, we're also going to set to the side. But any pickaxes or avalanches will be returned to our dice pool, as they will have no effect when resting. Now, when resting, if you roll three or more Yeti claws, then you have busted. So let's go ahead and push our luck. We're going to go ahead and roll those three dice. We got one Yeti symbol, and everything else will be returned. So we can choose to push our luck again or stop. So we're going to go ahead and push. 
All right, so we got one more tent. These will be returned. We're going to go again. We got another tent. And we're going to go ahead and push again. We got another tent and another Yeti. So we're going to hold off there. We don't want to push any farther. Now we're going to resolve the effects of the dice. So first off, we're going to receive one oxygen point for each tent that we have. So one, two, three, four, five. Now, if we rolled more tents than the oxygen, we can fill our tank. So if it would have gone past nine or, or 10 or higher, then we have busted as well. We've overfilled our tank. And the same goes true when climbing. If you spend below your zero, if you roll more pickaxes than your oxygen tank remaining, then you'll also bust. So we've taken care of that and we'll resolve the effects of the Yeti. So now any player that starts, uh, that is behind our player at the start of their turn will move forward one space. So our white player is behind us and he will not resolve the effects of that tile. The last thing I want to cover real quick are what the numbers at the bottom of each of the tiles represent. This is the maximum amount of oxygen you can recoup when resting on that level of the mountain. So for example, let's go ahead and say that our blue player had rolled really well for his resting and had gotten six tenths, which would allow him to recoup six points on his oxygen track. Unfortunately, he is on the fourth tier, or the, the third level of the mountain, which allows him to regain a maximum of four oxygen points. So even though he rolled six tenths, he can only regain four points of oxygen, so that's his maximum amount, so he can regain up to six, which unfortunately he could have used the extra. But And, and as you can see, as you go up the mountain, you can recoup less oxygen the farther up you go until you get to the summit up here where you cannot regain any oxygen for resting at all. So this is going to continue moving around the table in clockwise order with each player getting to take their turn as the players race up the mountain to try to get to the summit. A couple of things I'd like to point out. First off, as the players move up the mountain, each time they reach the ends of a row, they're going to move all the way back over to the left side. So they'll continue moving in this manner up the mountain. They will not snake their way up this way, as the tile effects are very specific to that direction. So as purple moves up, they'll move over here and continue this way, and then move up to the four, and then all the way up to the mountain. Now, once a player reaches the end where they're going to move up to the summit, at that point, once the player has expended, so let's go ahead and say that we started on this space here, and purple, the purple player was able to roll three or more pickaxes. We'll say he rolled three pickaxes. And then he decided to resolve his turn. So at this point, again, we would move the oxygen gauge down, make sure we have enough. And then we would move one, two, and then our third one, we would choose one of these three spaces to move into. It can be any one that we want. Once we move into it, we'll resolve the effects. If it is a blank summit symbol, then we have not won the game yet. We have not found the flag and we have, we'll have to wait. Now the other players will take their turn. If our player has any oxygen remaining, then he can take his turn again by rolling five dice. He must roll at least one pickaxe. Any pickaxes that he rolls, he has to expend oxygen for. And as long as he has oxygen remaining, then he can choose another one of the tiles to move on to. So let's go ahead and say this one. And it happens to be the flag tile. At this point, when a player finds the tile with the flag on it, they have won the game immediately and the game is over. Well, I hope you guys found this video helpful. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave those in the comment section below and I'll do my best to answer them. And if you enjoy this video, if you like what I do, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing to my channel as it will help me to continue to grow and bring new and exciting games to you guys. And if you guys want to swing by my Facebook and Twitter accounts, you'll find the links below. Let me know what you guys are playing, anything that you guys are interested in, games that, that are hot right now that I might have missed or games that you would be interested in me covering. I'd love to hear from you guys. Let me know what you guys are playing, doing, seeing anything above, especially with con season coming up. Let me know what you guys are excited about. Uh, anything that you, I should be looking at during the cons or anything above. And as always, thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my videos and leave me feedback on them. I do really appreciate it. I do listen to you guys and take into account everything you guys say. I do my best to try to improve these videos as I'm moving forward. And I love hearing from you guys. So let me know in those comments how things are going, any feedback you guys have as always. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.